All right, let's start our conversation this morning. Uh, the Ghanaian Times says, we will publish corruption cases soon. A photograph of the, uh, um, the special prosecutor here. And I'm sure you know why this story is here. Uh, there are concerns about his work. We'll take a look at that. I will deliver on promises, President assures. And um, uh, we're told that the eight who were picked up yesterday, over the weekend, sorry, uh, have been charged. And they are appearing in court today. The Ghanaian Times has all those stories. The finder, 1D1F, Chinese firms to inject $400 million. Uh, 57 1D1F businesses already in operation. That's according to uh, the uh, trade minister. So uh, that's what we know, 57 of them now in operation. Daily graphic, 16 beat headmaster to death, four in custody, two on the run. Photograph of the headmaster, Mr. George Sumwa Bosompim here on the front page and then government to support large-scale production of Kantanka vehicles and that story of the secessionist uh, on the daily graphic they've been charged uh, with conspiring to commit treason felony Aisha sister arrested for timber galamse uh, Rosewood is what is in question here for a photograph of the officers and Aisha here and uh, stop misleading Ghanaians Nana to Mahama. We'll take a look at those stories when uh, the chiefs of the Upper West Region called on the president at the Jubilee House this morning. My guest to do the talking, a uh, member of parliament for Tamale North, a member of the NDC, Honorable Alaji Suhini, is here. Good morning. Good morning, And boss. I hope you're doing great. Alhamdulillah, I'm terrific. Thank you. Thanks for your time with us. And a member of the CPP, Madam uh, Rodayana, is also here. Madam, good morning. Good morning. Hope boss. you're doing great. I'm doing fine. Grateful yes. for your time with us. <coughs> and the MP for Lejokuku, he's a member of the NPP. Uh, Honorable Dr. Oku, Bernard Okubo is also here. Good morning. Hope yeah. you're doing great. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Let's start from the Jubilee House. Now, if you take a look at the story as captured on page 16 of uh, Ghanaian Times, it says that President Okufo has expressed government commitment to develop the Lara Tumu Trunk Road in the Upper West Region which connects the country with its northern neighbor, Burkina Faso. He said the government had made a location in this year's budget for the construction of the road, among other roads in the Upper West Region. President Akufuadu gave the assurance when the Upper West Regional House of Chiefs called on him at the Jubilee House in Accra. Uh, the leaders presented a number of concerns to the president. Uh, they talked about the poor nature of roads in the region. Uh, also, they talked about the major trunk roads in that part of the country. The president assured that uh, uh, that road will get some attention soon. Again, they talked about the Wa Regional Hospital and asked the president to facilitate completion of the project. They again referred to the airport uh, at Wa, and which they urged the president to facilitate the process to fast track operations of commercial flights to ease movement of travelers from the upper west region. The president was not too happy and he blamed uh, president, former president Mahama, saying that he had been told before he came into office that every road in Ghana was constructed. This is what the president said. Before I came here, I was told by my principal competitor that he had done all the roads in the country and that he is responsible for unprecedented infrastructure development. He said another that yet the nature of roads in the country was still deplorable. It is not good for us as politicians to make misleading, uh, to be misleading the people. If you have not done something, don't claim it. Don't write or make pronouncement on it. The, the people themselves can tell the truth about what is going on. That's the story so far. I'd like to see any, let me start the conversation with you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and let me say good morning to my colleague panelists and also good morning to uh, our viewers, especially the very good people of the Tamale North constituency. All right. And uh, Ramadan Mubarak to all Muslims out there who are, you know, uh, in the month of Ramadan and doing as expected. We pray that Almighty Allah will grant us the best of his gifts as we strive mm. to be better at serving <coughs> and worshiping him. <coughs> right. 
I read, I, I heard you read the story, mm. and one thing was very clear. The people of the Upper West Region, especially their chiefs, know what is important to them. They know what they expect from their governments over the period. They outlined or listed the projects that they find very useful you know, to them <coughs> and for their people. The hospital that um, was started by the previous government, which according to them is not seeing progress. The roads network, the airport. So those are things that are important to them. And those things are important to them because they know how those things can help transform the region. For example, the hospital, when it is done, will not just improve health delivery, but will also provide jobs. The airport, when it is put to full use, will not just facilitate transportation, but will also provide jobs for the people. The road network, some of the projects that have stalled, mm. if the president, the current government, continue with those projects, it will not just facilitate the movement of goods and people, but it's also going to improve the economy of the area. And a classical example is what we see in our neighborhoods. When a road is done, the number of businesses that spring up on that road tells you the economic impact of road construction, the, 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 how just a road can impact the, econom the economy of a local area. Mm. So the chiefs know this, and that's why they want that from their government. But I find the president's response so ridiculous. But you see, it speaks to how clueless he is simply clueless. I mean, almost everything he has done since he was sworn into office points to one thing. Living a childhood dream, dancing at the least opportunity, at the problems that these, I mean, the people of Ghana have. Reading beautiful speeches that he does not even understand. No wonder when it is even you know, uh, 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 plagiarize, he doesn't realize. I mean, how can the president possibly look the people in the eye, the chiefs, and lie that the former president said he constructed all the roads in this country? How? I mean, at his level, you expect serial callers to do that. At his level. If it is not because he's clueless, you don't expect him to, 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 to say such a thing because it is simply not true. At what point did the former president say that he constructed all the roads in the country? We all, we're all here. Mm. We're all in this country. And, and, and such a thing has never been said by the former president. Not when he was president and not when he left or when he is former president. So where is that lie coming from? But you see, as, as, as president for over three years, he has simply nothing to show. He has nothing to show. And I was listening to uh, uh, a team of the IMF this morning on radio, and I think it was reported from a program that they held yesterday, and the team was looking at government policies and programs and concluded on one thing, that the investments of this government is not sustainable. The investments that they are making, the kind of growth that those investments will yield cannot be sustained because they don't see corresponding investments in the infrastructure growth that will support whatever 
is being grown today. So, for example, when you say you are investing so much in education, putting so much money in education, but educational infrastructure is not being improved, that is not sustainable growth. That is growth that will choke the whole education sector. You know, in agriculture, for example, yet the trunk roads that will ensure or facilitate the movement of the produce from the farms mm. to the market centers are abandoned. Investments are not in that area. It is going to be an awkward growth, growth that you will not benefit from. And I'm not surprised that the team of IMF uh, uh, specialists spoke to this matter and how reckless the investment of this government is. So the president should at least, apart from the, you know, uh, 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 tragedy of governance that he is giving us, must be honest. Could he, he be should referring be, he should to just be honest. the unprecedented infrastructure phrase that we, we unprecedented we, 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 yeah, we heard of right, in right, 2016, right, to 2016. Right. You see, and that is why I am calling on the president to be honest. Remember when the former president said he will engage the people of Ghana and as a party we will consider reviewing the free SHS. Mm. Review again by the president was all of a sudden, you know, supposed to mean stop, collapse, review. The word review, by his understanding, he said it was, they were going to stop it. Even though subsequently, some of his ministers and his appointees have come to agree with the position of former President Muhammad that that program, good as it is, needs to be reviewed. So it is the same. Wrap up for me. It is the same thing that I see him doing again, mm -hmm. and that's why I say he is clueless. Because unprecedented cannot mean complete construction of all roads in Ghana. Right. Unprecedented is when over the years we have been doing say 100 kilometers of road a year and then another government comes and is able to even do 500 kilometers a year that is unprecedented but right. that is not to say mm -hmm. that all the roads have been I done. said we will come back to you it's, it, it's ridiculous that the president will sink that low madam Roda it, it, the president expressing concerns about road top notch you would say I mean, if you visit rural Ghana, certainly if you put up a road, it affects the entire economy. Perhaps we're not paying too much attention to the, the rural sector. Is that what we're doing? Good morning, Ghana. Mm. Um, I'll think that if we tackled roads, then we would have started something that would open up a lot of things, employment and whatever. Rural Ghana, I, as, as he was talking, I was like, if you go to rural Ghana, mm. most of the roads, like if you get half a kilometer, quarter of a kilometer, they are, some of them are CPP roads. And I'm sitting here and I'm asking myself, if roads that were done in the 60s, you know, are still what is there. You mm. go to Volta region, we, we go campaigning in Volta region, and you find them point out roads to you. This is a Kwame Nkrumah CPP road. Since this road was done, no other government has come here. Now, how would you expect such a place to develop? So if you're talking of rural Ghana, for instance, if you're looking even, I wouldn't say that um, Upper West is so developed. Mm. So let's look at the road situation in Upper West. And let's look, you know, look at that vis-a-vis -vis the um, development mm. of the area. You find that because there are no roads, there's no development. People are not even willing to go to those places in postings. So you don't have the doctors going, you don't have the nurses going. So even if you put up those infrastructure, people will not go. Not too long ago, we even had people not wanting to go to Central Region, let alone Upper West Region. You understand? Now, when it comes to roads, movement of goods and people, 
I'm looking even at my Boko road, mm. Bolgatanga Boko. It's become something like a cult road. Because somehow... So the road has made you sell out. That is it. It's so old. And yet this road, 40, 48 miles of road, just between Bolgatanga and Boko. And it can't be done. And you, you think of the fact that Boko was this commercial hub which borders Burkina Faso, Togo, and Ivory Coast. If you look at the volume of trade that was going on between these two countries, or these three countries, mm. and Ghana, then you realize that roads are very essential things. So we are talking about monies. If, if we can compute the amount of monies that we have had being used in the road sector as against what we have seen on the ground, then you start asking questions. Why is it that roads that were done with just bitumen surface can last this long and roads that are supposed to have been asphalted suddenly last just as old as the, the, the president or the government that does it? So those are questions. But then I'm asking again, for the three northern regions and all the other agricultural areas that we have, do we really need roads or railways? Do we need roads at this point in time or rail? I think that um, the NDC tackles some roads. I'm seeing the... But not all roads, as the president Not all roads, said. because um, for me, I was even more concerned about my area road. That's the Bolgatanga Boku Road, mm. which for me is a very crucial road for the Upper East region. But it's not being done. Now we're even talking about the railway. When is it going to be done? So... Um, railway development, roads development in this country has really stifled. We've just been given the talk, talk, talk. Everybody's talking. Uh, right, even let's look at our inner cities. I keep asking myself, why is it that governments are so wicked and mean to people who spend their money putting up buildings, houses for themselves? One expects at least the state to bring out certain facilities. Roads are one of them. But you have intercity roads even being left to rot. So you put up a beautiful house and you have a terrible road even to get there. So the whole area looks like run down and it's like a shanty town. Is that the best that we can do? So if you look at that and just oppose that to even the rural areas, then you ask yourself, what kind of roads are we really doing? Are we doing modern roads? Are we doing economic roads? Are we, are we really building the roads? Let me tell you something else. We have convenience roads. These are roads that come up when um, a government official moves into an area. Mm. Within seconds, you find a road going up there. So you don't even know whether they put any priority to any other place. They just, boom, the road is there. It's done overnight. So what is happening in this country when it comes to road? We, everybody talks about road, but rural areas need those roads. And they don't need asphalted roads. They, may, they just need good bituminous roads to move goods and themselves to the market areas. That is what we need right now. Not the kinds of politicking that we go. And we talk of roads. Our major headache, Temamoto Way. Temamoto Way. Something that was left for us to actually look after, to serve us, has now become a death trap. And we're talking of new roads. We're talking of other roads. And we're looking at this 18 miles road linking Accra and Tema, opening up an ECOWAS based road, getting, you know, all spots. And nobody seems to bother because we're still using bitumen on asphalt to patch up. So there is, there is a problem. Everybody wants to take uh, credit for the roads. Mm. Everybody comes and is talking about the road sector. Yes, because that's where the money is. When it comes to money, being fizzled out it comes to any corrupt kind of practice it's always in their infrastructure development area and i'm saying this because you look at roads the way they are being built in this country and you ask yourself do they think we are stupid because you look at somebody just pouring uh, 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 um, sand then chippings then spraying on bitumen rolling on it and says that it's a road and the person gets paid one rain and the whole thing is washed away and nobody gets punished for it. The person comes again the next time. So, so it's, it's, it's a very difficult situation that we find ourselves in. Mm. And that is how come um, the president can say 
that the ex-president, John Mahama, had said that he had done the roads. Because some roads were there, and after two rains, they went. They were not there anymore. You understand? I can, I can talk of the um, Ashalibuche mm. town road, you know, that road linking from school junction right. into Ashalibuche town. Before the elections, the road was fine. After elections, it was all gone. So was there a road? But then I can also look at the other side. From uh, Otano Junction in Ajuringano area mm. to that same school junction, I see a beautiful road coming up. But it started in John Mahama's time. So you know, th this is what I'm saying, that you cannot really tell who is really telling us the truth because the two parties do the same thing. When one comes, it does the same thing and goes, another one comes and then re you know, also repeats the same thing. We've not had value for money in our roads and railway sector because I see us getting $1 billion for railways. And I'm asking, what kind of rails? If, if what I saw, mm. those sleepers, and what I'm hearing, that even the sleepers being used for the new railway lines are so soft like chipboard. And I'm asking, who went and, and imported this kind of thing? When we are a, a timber producing country, and we could not make those, and you had to go to China and bring chipboard, you know? And I'm looking at railways, don't they travel? Our president is a person who has traveled um, the Minister for Rail Sector is somebody who has traveled. Is that the kind of railway stations that they find when they travel? Just next door Nigeria, mm. they're doing beautiful <clears throat> rails. Papucha Rail, Ethiopia, all those places, you look at them and you ask yourself, is it the kind of rails you just go and put chippings around it? No pavements, no nothing, no, no proper shelter, nothing? And you say you've done railway, you have, I hope that this one billion that is going to come, we're going to see value for money. That's my hope. Don't be hopeful. That we'll see value for money because it's getting really, really, really um, disheartening that as a people, we tend not to realize that mm. these days people are wide awake and that you can get anything from the nets. Grateful. Uh, Dr. Koboy, the Upper World Chiefs are asking for some projects to be completed. The uh, Wa Airport, the Wa Regional Hospital, particularly, they're asking for roads. The president says, well, he was told that every road has been done. Did the president get it wrong? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I am, I'm, I'm, let me say good morning, first of all, to our viewers especially to those watching from the electrical constraints. Now, if you read carefully the Kwesibocho report, mm. um, trying to diagnose what made the NDC to lose the elections, it spoke about the way their communicators, the angles they normally walk when they get the opportunity to communicate to the public. I mean, I'm sad by the way my brother went at the president, proposed like ridiculous statements, I mean, I mean, he is lost. He just wanted to. He's living his childhood dreams, and it's like he doesn't know what he's doing. Really, in this country, if you you were in government for eight years, if you even did just adequate, not just even uh, excellent performance, would we have the whole country going to the president and saying that our roads are bad? Everyone goes to the man and tells him, "My roads are bad." But for Christ's sake, this country was not coming from a military regime. We did not just start a year ago. And why, the reason why sometimes the president says that, you see, this is communication. When you have a mother who tells me, I feed all my children, they are doing so well. And suddenly, the kids come to me, they are so lean, and they are like, they are hungry. I go like, but I was told you are all, I mean, satisfied and happy. Does it mean that the kids had every single thing they wanted in their lives? This is communication. The president wanted us to remember what the outgoing, outgoing president told us. That infrastructure was unprecedented in his time. Okay, so he didn't mean all roads. Obvious, but but okay. who in his... I don't want to use an expression. But mm. you see, if you are being fair in your analysis, if the president says that, but your, your, your former president said he had done so well, we were so cool. Mm. Does it mean every single road in this country was that? Obviously, he was referring to the comments and the claims made by the previous regime that they, they had done infrastructure that had not been seen in our lifetime. That's what the campaign was about when they were going to the election. But I'm happy that Ghanaians are discerning. 
they they looked at what they were experiencing and voted. Do you remember the Burkina Bay contractor? Kanazoe, who were told that the road he had made is a long time. The president said it's a long time he saw such a road. Today, go and watch that road. I wrote a comment you made. How come roads made by Nkuma a champion? When you go to Teshi Nungwa Estates, the roads there, they came before the Fourth Republic. My brother, they are still intact. They are, they are roads that meander through the estates. Yet, we have roads that were done by previous regime. Three years ago, they have to and do surfacing every year. How come a champion's road is still intact, my brother? And guess what? They don't even service them, but they are doing well. So, my brother, let's be honest with ourselves as a country. This president is being inundated with requests for fixation and construction of roads. And he's asked this question before. If the previous regime even did a little about this, how come anyone who misses, especially the chiefs, we are on our knees, help us. <coughs> Let your cuckoo, my brother. 7.5 kilometer road, Lekma. I've cried about it for centuries. Look, sometimes when I cry to a point, push the president to a point, myself, I, I just remind myself that be calm on this man because there are many things he's doing. We need a road, though. I don't want to get into the business of saying that the former president, the former regime had eight years to construct a road in front of a referral hospital. They are one of the reasons why they lost. Mm -hmm. So we are focused on fixing them. But rather, when you inherit an economy, there are some basics you must get right. President Kufado knows that infrastructure is key when you want to transform an economy from agrarian to what? Um, industrial economy. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Right. If you have an economy where the banks are at the tip of collapsing, there is going to be a crisis. Because you have banks who have taken deposits of Ghanaians and they've spent them like piggy banks money. You need to sanitize that system before you can even have a base that can support contractors to go and work. This government spent 12 billion Ghana cities to fix the banking mess, which was created some years ago. 12 billion cities. 12 billion. And guess what? This 12 billion could have fixed significant portion of our roads problem. But you can't fix a road when you have a banking sector that can tip at the edge. So... It's just because we are trying to get the basics right. And in our manifesto, we said it, that the economy first must be brought on its feet. So that when you are pushing any sector to stand on its feet, mm -hmm. they all normally rest on the economy. Um, let me use the Lejukuku Road and the Lekman Road to give you an insight as to what we are facing now. That road, the contractor had raised about six certificates. One road. Six different certificates. All not paid. Beyond the mobilization received to go to site, nothing. Certificate one, two, three, four, five, six. And you see, see what Nana Kufado is experiencing. He is compelled to pay certificates of work that was done before he came. And what makes it worse is that most of the work he came to meet, either is not up to the money you see, or the work has gone back, as in it's retrogressed. I get it. Once the, the, the project is abandoned, secondly, yes, oh, yes. Okay. And this contractor did not abandon when. Kufaru was warning. He abandoned the road before we came to power. About eight months before, he left because he was not getting paid. So you have a president or a government who is paying money to people who did work under a previous regime. And guess what? The members of those regimes come and tell you, since you came, we've not seen one meter of asphalt. Yet, we are compelled to first pay for their indebtedness. Because you can't tell a contractor, do a road now, let me pay my portion and leave to you in his portion. The same people tell you, why don't you see anything? But the, the level of debt in the road sector, mm. you are supposed to handle that before they can even move to the road. And you know what happened to the first contractor, like uh, Teshi Link? When he was given certificate one, and was, we pleaded that he went to site, he said that the, the volume of debt is such that we must pay more before he can move to site. So we've paid this man money, and he couldn't go to site. If even, I'm not saying no government owes, but how can a contractor under you raise certificate one, two, three, four, five, six. What is happening? And these people are still talking. But because government is a continuum, we are supposed to handle the mess that we made. And my brother, to a large extent, I think this economy has been... Look, all the watches. Economy is a science. Right? It's not Dr. Koboy saying. When you speak to any observer or civil society or body that deals with the economy, they tell you, this Ghanaian economy now... Mm -hmm.
came, it's gone back. Cocoa sector, production was going down, it's gone back. Right. When you look at the banking sector, the crisis that was about to happen, collapse and all that, they have be become strengthened. It's because we've also put in place some social protection mechanisms, like the free SHS. It's made us spend volumes of money in these investments. I've heard people say that this is not necessary. Why not look at infrastructure? It's true. But leadership is about choices. If you're a leader, you can't have everything at the same time. Either you choose between funding and sponsoring Ghanaian children to receive education and struggle to find money to do all the roads or use the money to do the roads and let average 100,000 kids fall off schooling every year. But this president says that I'm prepared to pay 1.5 billion Ghana cities every year to fund Ghanaian children. They said they wanted to finish the infrastructure. Some of the people told us it can be done in 20, 30 years. We said we are going to do it now. Right. So what I'm saying is that we appreciate the enormity of the work that is there. But we have to find resources mm. to make sure that we complete some of them. And we don't want to cry too much about the past. Because it is because of that level of recklessness that Ghanaians voted them out of power. And the president, if you watch, the president did not just cry or uh, uh, lament. With, he told them that the road you are talking about has been captured in the budget. The 2019 budget. Exactly. So we just have to follow through and make sure that work starts. We are in May. Exactly. Okay. Look, um, <laughs> we are not talking about landing sites. But just to chip in that, because I'm an MP from a coastal town, mm. Friday, I got a call from the transport minister. They are coming to Teshi to inspect the place. We are part of the 10 landing sites that are about to be built. The Fisher Force called me and told me, we've been promised landing sites since Adam. We don't care whether you are with the NDC or MPP. The government that builds this project will be committed to them to the third generation. The traditional Ghanaian engineer, when you go to Urban Rose, will tell you, in calculating for a cost of a road, they will do the asphalting, base one, this, that, do a bitumen. The cost is huge. The money you need to do one kilometer of a bitumen road, mm. right? You can use that money to do close to 200 kilometers or more of just this huge drain I'm talking about. We don't need bitumen okay. on every road in Ghana. We should start with a road that will remain more trouble for at least five if years. By putting a drain on one side. Put a drain. That's your suggestion. And in Lejokuku, we've started putting drains on one side. How and guess what? Even with that bitumen, no. so that at least... Would, okay. No, no. In the northern region? No, no. The, the, the point... Yes. We don't have that. We no, no. Have flat land. No, no, no. No, no. But when you have a land, and uh, yeah, it, uh, uh, vehicles use it, mm. when any time you put a drain on the side, you are able to keep it in the good shape for at least four or five years. In the absence of any... What's the name? Any Drains. drain. It's at the mercy of erosion and water when it flows. So the point I'm making is that Let's have drains on, on one side, side of the even if, if, are, even if they are untapped. Or closed drains. If it's closed, it's the better. Okay. And guess what? Okay, right. I'm coming. Uh, right. Oh, just a second. No, you're, 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 you're you have been going on and on yeah. without yeah. wrapping yeah. up. Wrap up. Uh, yeah, 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 wrap up. You know, in the Jokuku, <laughs> when the payloaders started to dig the drains on one side, people came from their homes. The excitement. They didn't see asphalt. They didn't see any complicated materials they just saw digging of one side and they are like we thank you because proud to this we we're putting even our bath water and things on the road now they so put our, it in the drain yes our people need okay. little things not all right the, okay the it, is it bright oh, but allow her to say something <laughs> right um <laughs> um i like it i'll start my reaction with a bit. text message from one of our viewers in fact ah, he's uh, from one of your followers <laughs> no, <laughs> no, of our, yeah. in fact uh, maybe you will know him he's uh, he's he's he's, he's uh, an old journalist you oh. know he says i am eric i live in the mp's community he's not telling the truth and in fact that is me editing it he used a harsh word. But he's, he's sent it to he's not telling so the it's truth. It's not surprising how the contractor like... was still working long after Nanado was sworn in and That's was stopped. True. Come on. The he's NDC stopped. saw the Bush Road, he's the true. La Palm Teshi Nungwa True yeah. Beach Road. They also saw asphalt asphalting of many roads in Teshi and Nungwa. The Lekma Hospital Road was under construction to link to Spintex. My brother, that is not true. I'm the MP for the That's... place. 
Look, he says he right. lives there. Please, there were no machines on the Ekman Road. The no, look, look, look. For him, but I can tell him that this is not true. Let me proceed. Okay. How can we talk like that? Left, he left the site. They are building the site. So, so, okay. so that this is, Eric guy is not saying the truth. That is and no one that he sent it to your phone. That is a not text. Not phone. That is a text. This that is a political phone. It's an NDC phone. Now, now he claims that they spent so much money in cleaning up the banking sector. Yes, of course. Right. Just read the read the IMF report. And the IMF will tell you yeah. that this government, the road that this government chose to deal with the banking sector was costly. It's not and uh, oh, please, please, please. I, I wasn't doing I've that to you. I wasn't uh, doing uh, that. Oh, okay, boy. I'm read that I'm, sure. I'm referring sure. to the actually, please Why? Go on. We, I, I, I we're not told we're going to have that discussion. No, but I've referenced the document. Go and read it. No, it's not true. It was costly. Yeah. And that is why our chief whip, the minority chief whip, has put it simply that how reasonable is it to use 19 billion Ghana cities to save banks that needed 9 billion to survive? That's the question that the minority chief whip is asking. Why do you use 19 billion and, and boast that you are unable to do other things because you use 19 billion? Meanwhile, the banks just needed nine, 8 billion or 9 billion. To survive. And the that? IMF has actually said that it was costly and expensive. Exactly. Now he talks about the Kwesi like Bocho report. Mm. Again, it's a lie. The Kwesi Bocho report is not a public document. So but you cannot sit here and pontificate really? about what was contained what in the Kwesi Bocho report. <laughs> It's a lie. It's not public. So what it's not a public it? document. You don't have, have it. Read it. You have don't read have it. Portions of it's a lie. I'm, I'm so you can't sit here and pontificate about what you know to be in that document. So it's and then proceed. Please, Oko boy, please. You are gentleman. So let me finish. You are lying. I can't watch you. You are government. So you allow me. You know. So you see, it's it's a lie to sit here and say that this is what is contained in a report that you don't have. It's not a public document. But what we know is that. And I repeat it, that the president is clueless, just like they believed President Mahama was incompetent. And that was not an insult. That was not harsh language. Clueless cannot be a harsh language. He is simply clueless. And he has demonstrated it in so many ways than one. And clearly when he tells the people of the Upper West region that the former president claimed to have done all roads, he is being clueless. And when he interprets unprecedented performance to mean solving all the problems, he is simply being clueless. When he goes about, you know, uh, 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 doing the things that I spoke about earlier, if it is about the roads, right, under the NDC, Maums, a construction firm, was on the Navrongo Tumu Road in the Upper West Region had done a lot of work on it. As we speak, he's not on it. Where he ended when the NDC was in power, there's deterioration now. You had Ghanem and some const a Chinese construction firm also on the Wa to Hen road. As we speak, they are also not there. In fact, there were plans to also begin the Hen to Tumu road. I mean to Tumu. It's been stopped and the people know so when you act ridiculously in front of them and tell them that, oh, but the former president said he did all the roads, they know that the former president indeed was in the process of doing the roads. And when we speak of unprecedented, right, I, I could go on and on just about roads in his constituency that governments in the past could not use the number of years the NDC used to do the number of roads that he had in his constituency. I could go on. Maybe I'll just limit it to Greater Accra. You remember the Achimota of Ankau, the Tekwashi, Medina, Medina Pantai, the rehabilitation of Domi uh, Kitasi Road, the rehabilitation of Ashoma Hachu and Agbubu, uh, Agbuba Estate Roads. This were and, and on, on the Ministry of uh, uh, Roads and Highways website. So. With the dates okay. that they were, they were, they were done.
Okay. You know, and, and, and you have them region by region. I, the Gifford Road, the Palace, uh, the Palace Mall Road, these were roads that you can refer to as unprecedented roads, especially because of the time frame within which they were delivered. The Circle Interchange, the Pokwasi, and all those roads, if you consider, if, if President Kufo, you see, he speaks like there was no NPP government in power before. Okay. Where are the President Kufo roads? Uh, so he talks about Nkrumah roads and conveniently jumps to the NDC and how some of them have, as if the NPP have never been in Let power. Me give President Kufo did roads. Can you compare those roads that President Kufo did to the roads that President Mahama okay, did? Allah Obviously not. But they were unprecedented. But it did not mean, and anybody who is not clueless will understand that it did not mean that we had solved all the problems I'm grateful. in this country. Diana, the president was for me on, on this uh, get well, married. It seems like um, our roads, roads that are constructed in Ghana, are sometimes too expensive as compared to other African countries. Mm. You understand? So the whole idea of this, we building roads and all that, at what cost? Is it value for money for us? So let's start looking at those issues, getting value for money roads. Because when we, when we add up so many other things to the cost of roads, it means that if you could get five kilometers of roads, you eventually get three kilometers of road. Is that fair? Is that, is that good value for money? So um, talking about the roads in there and out there, it's so difficult to talk about because it's scattered all over this country. So it's left to the people who live within those areas to let us know who did good roads and who did bad roads. Grateful. But we, okay, right. as we say, I like the cost part of it right. because as we speak now, the, yeah, a kilometer of road that used to cost just about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is now costing it's over. And we'll have time, time, time to talk about it. About three right. times right. the price. <laughs> Wrap up. Right. The president, even in his cluelessness, cluelessness, uh, very clueless, as you granted, has been able to implement a program that you people shied away from. Which is sponsoring an average of 1.5 million 750,000 Ghanaian students to the free SHS program. <laughs> a clueless government, uh, government press, please. I was, you said I should ask uh, 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 Anyway, a president that is so clueless, according to you, has been able to employ the nurses you made them sit at home for four plus years. He's given them clearance over 53,000 health workers. The clueless president you claim, the clueless president, has been able to make the Bobozi mines start to work again, bringing over 2,000 lives back to work. The so called clueless president has been able to pay the third two pension funds, which you ran away from for over seven years. This so clueless president is making sure that our thermal plants are fired for us to have reliable energy. This so called clueless president, in his own time, has been able to make sure that the railway sector is rejuvenated. This clueless president has made a stadium at the University of Ghana, which was sleeping for eight years, wake up again. Azuma Nelson said they should take his name off that stadium over there because the place is a mess. This clueless president has gotten people to start working there. This same clueless president has made sure that this country has revived its banks. This clueless president has brought the interest rates you could not touch from 26% down to about 19%. Rates are not as high as in your time. Healthy Life Factory, Mr. Niyama, good morning to him. Healthy Life, beverages, along Batuna. When the president visited them to see their operations, he said, had it not been for the president's stimulus package, they would have collapsed. The 300 workers. Cool. Please, this same... <laughs> no, this side, same no, no, sir, no, please, sir. please. This no, same... Sir. Please, please, yeah, please. Yeah, that's part of this the This same clueless president make sure that this government gave gas at a concessionary rate to Twyford Factory to set up their towers plant at Shama. This clueless president make sure that in this country we have a system that ensures that workers are protected with their two funds like i mentioned he's a clueless president according to you but he's in his clueless, cluelessness and the people know if this is cluelessness i don't know the adjective to use to the one you adore so much president george roman i would not like to use some things on him but let's be careful with our words this is a government that is committed to making sure that infrastructure is not virtual it is real okay. virtual real not virtual your infrastructure is virtual. So much infrastructure, productivity was tanking, and yet people were suffering. Where was your infrastructure? But we are still suffering, no? I'm not saying that. <laughs> Even in Jesus' Christ's time, there was suffering. I admit. I like that. Yes. Well, I am well, grateful for your time. Unfortunately, you see, you see, we couldn't so. touch on the office of the special prosecutor. I ran out of it would time. Have been, it would have been an interesting yes, topic. But, uh, to he said he will publish his cases with. very soon. 
We're hoping for we'll have another time to talk about it. I'm grateful. Honorable Alajis Yuli is MP for Tamale North, a member of the NDC. Madam Please, Ruliana, but tell the president to be honest. A with member us. of I mean, the NDC. He should do his campaign. My Madam Bernard Okuboy is the MP for Lejo Kuku. He's praying for his road to be done. <laughs> uh, we're praying for that road to be done too. Have a good morning once again.